Hi, camp students. It's Miss Horn, and welcome to another video over acids and bases. In this video, I am going to be going through um, a lot of mathy type problems, so you want to have a calculator out. Also, make sure you have something to write with and paper so that you can take great notes. First of all, I need you to understand the difference between strong and weak acids and bases. It says strong acids and bases ionize completely an aqueous solution to produce H plus or free OH ions, so hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions, which give acids and bases their power. Any substance that ionizes or dissociates completely or almost completely in aqueous solution is known as an electrolyte. Solutions of electrolytes conduct electricity. Examples of strong electrolytes are strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. Here is the list of strong acids and strong bases. Yes, these need to be memorized. Make sure you know these. Notice I have the word monoprotic written here and diprotic written here. All that means is, is it giving away one hydrogen or two hydrogens? Di for two, mono for one. Okay, so here are our strong acids. Here are our strong bases. It says acids and bases not on these lists are weak meaning they ionize only a small amount, they will also be considered weak electrolytes. It is important to distinguish the terms concentrated and dilute from the terms strong and weak. Concentrated solutions have a relatively high concentration of dissolved solute, and dilute solutions have a relatively low concentration of dissolved solute. This has nothing to do with the extent of ionization. Okay, so for example, if I have a one molar solution of hydrochloric acid, this is a strong acid, but yet it is a dilute solution. And by dilute, I mean I've got more water there than dissolved solute, okay? But yet it's still a strong acid, okay? So if I have a 12 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, now this is still a strong acid, but now it's a concentrated solution, meaning there's a lot of solute dissolved in water there, okay? Um, a one molar solution of carbonic acid, that's a weak acid in a dilute solution because it's only one molar. And 16 molar is very concentrated, but still we've got carbonic acid, which is a weak acid, so it can be weak and concentrated as well. So the pH scale. It says pH is a numerical scale typically ranging from 0 to 14. pH stands for power of hydrogen ion. So we talked about this in the last video, what the pH scale looks like. It says pH gives us a quantitative measure of the acidity or basicity of the aqueous solution. Whether or not a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral depends on the balance of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So if it's neutral, then these ions are going to be equal. If it's acidic, then you'll have more hydrogen ions. If it's basic, you'll have more hydroxide ions. But the concentration of these ions are usually very small numbers, like 1.0 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. So the pH scale was developed to generate numbers that are easier to work with. Okay, so here I have the pH of some common household items. Let's see here. Or things that at least you're um, familiar with. So if you look here, extremely acidic. We've got hydrochloric acid with a pH of about zero. That's really, really, really acidic. Your gastric fluid, which is really necessary in order to digest food. Then lemon juice, vinegar, tomatoes and bananas, bread, milk. Milk is in the acidic region. A lot of kids are confused by this. They think milk is a base. It is not. It is an acid. Um, pure water, seven. When you get into bases, we're talking about eggs, antacids, soaps, ammonia, hair remover, oven cleaner. All of these things are bases. Okay, the pH scale. pH is the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, I'm going to give you a whole list of equations that's going to help you to figure out the pH or pOH of something. Now, I need you to be able to 
put them in your calculator, and solve correctly. So that's what we're going to do in the next few minutes. Okay, so here we go. If our hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3, what is the base 10 log? So what we would do here is just hit the log button in our calculator and type this number in. What we would get here is negative 3. But when it says, what is the negative base 10 log, which is what you're going to do in order to calculate pH, you would actually get the number 3. So if you have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3, then the pH is going to be 3. So this is an acid. Okay, if we have a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4, the base 10 log, I'm sure you guessed, it would be negative 4. But if we do the negative base 10 log, then our pH is going to come out to 4, which is still acidic. So notice that if the hydrogen ion concentration decreases by a factor of 10, meaning one decimal place to the left, the pH goes up by 1. We can also calculate pOH. So pOH equals the negative log base 10 of the hydroxide ion concentration. So pH is just used more often than pOH. There's a special relationship between pH and pOH. If you multiply together the hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration, you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, which means that if you add together your pH and your pOH, that equals 14, which is at the very top of our pH scale. So it's not terribly hard to memorize. Okay, so here is a little chart explaining things. If you have a neutral solution, your pH and your pOH will be 7. So when you add them together, it will get 14. Your hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration will be the same, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. If it's acidic, your pH is less than 7, your pOH is greater than 7. And if you're basic, it's the opposite. Your pH is greater than 7, but your pOH is less than 7. So the pOH scale is exactly the opposite of the pH scale. Okay, so here are the equations we're going to give you for any tests or quizzes um, over this unit. It contains four equations. pH plus pOH equals 14. If you multiply your concentrations together, you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and your pOH is the negative log of your hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so let's do some examples. If you're given the pH and asked to find the pOH, remember that pH and pOH equal 14. So if your pH is 7, your pOH is also 7, because all you have to do is subtract. If your pH is 3, then 14 minus 3 gives you a pOH of 11. All right, so this one would be neutral, and this one here would be an acid. It's the same if you're going from the opposite angle. If I give you pOH and ask for pH, again, they should add up to 14, so you can just subtract to figure out the opposite. If you're given a pOH of 10, your pH will be 4. If you're given a pOH of 0, then your pH is 14. And in my opinion, it's easier just to memorize one scale. So having memorized the pH scale, I know this is an acid and this is a base. Given hydrogen ion concentration, find hydroxide ion concentration. So again, when you multiply them together, you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So to solve here, you're going to divide. You'll take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by your hydrogen ion concentration in order to get hydroxide. Simple math. So we would get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5th in this situation. If our hydrogen ion concentration was 1.0 times 10 to the negative second, to get hydroxide, you would divide and you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 12. Same thing for doing the opposite. So if you're given hydroxide ion concentration and ask for hydrogen ion concentration, do the same. So go ahead for a minute and pause the video and try the examples G and H on your own. Okay, welcome back. Let's see if you got these right. I have the answers for G and H. For H, notice I've given the decimal form and I also gave the answer in scientific notation rounded to two significant figures. 
given your hydrogen ion concentration, find pH. So this is when you do the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So in your calculator, first you need to hit the negative button, then the log button, and put in the concentration. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. Now remember to use the E button that we discussed in order to put in times 10. Okay, so 1.0 E negative 7. Um, is how you will type that in. So again, go ahead and pause it and see if you can do these. Okay, welcome back. Let's see if you got the right answers. So when you do the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, you get a pH of 7. When you do the negative log of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 10, you get 9.5 for your pH. So this one is neutral and this one's a base. All right, here are two more examples to try on your own. When you come back, or unpause the video, I will have the answers up. Okay, so if you're given the hydroxide ion concentration, you're supposed to find pOH. So usually what I tell kids is if you're trying to take the number out of brackets. So here we've got concentration in brackets. We're just trying to find the pOH. So I take it out of brackets, or which is a simple way to say it, and you do the negative log of it, okay? So just like if you have H plus in brackets and you're trying to get out of brackets, you always just do negative log. It's pretty easy to remember doing it that way. Hopefully you got these correct. Now, if you're given the pH and you want to find the hydrogen ion concentration, then you actually do the opposite. On the calculator, you're going to hit second button, log, and then put in the negative pH. So in this example, we'll do second log negative 3 and we get a hydrogen ion concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 3. And if we do the same for N, we're going to get 3.16 uh, times 10 to the negative 11. Notice here I rounded to 3 sig figs because my pH was given in 3 sig figs. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try to solve for the hydroxide ion concentrations of these. Okay, welcome back. Check your answers and see how you did. All right, guys, in this video, the first thing we learned were strong versus weak acids and bases. Then we learned how to differentiate between words like concentrated and dilute and strong and weak. And then lastly, we did a lot of calculations with pH, which you will have to do on tests and quizzes. Get comfortable manipulating those equations. If you have any questions, make sure to write them down so you remember to ask them in class. Have a wonderful evening.